Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. All right, Loy Macedo speaking to you from LoyMacedo.com. Who is Loy Macedo and think personal branding? Long time no see, guys. Long time. I actually wanted to put up a video since two weeks, but every time I thought I'd put up a video, I ended up getting another client for a job in the Middle East. I don't know what, what the hell is happening to the Middle East. My prediction was jobs would be, you know, going down in January. It would be slow. It'll pick up slowly from January and then it'll start in February, March. But apparently I was wrong. I'd actually planned this video two weeks ago. You'd not believe two weeks ago, but every time I thought I'd put up an ad, something or another kept coming in. Client kept saying, you know, because for me, money's, you know, money's most important. So if a guy says, I have the money, you know, I would like to do my resume. I have this job opportunity. I'm like, okay, fine. You know, because these videos are more like a public service announcement. It's more like a hobby, more like, uh, you know, I, I share information and I don't get paid for it. So I do this out of not a selfless charitable thing. It adds to my brand, my value, my visibility, but I don't get paid for it. So when someone offers me money and says, you know, I got this cash. Can you do my resume? I'll pay you your price. Well, everything stops. So from two weeks, I've been so bloody busy. It's to give you an idea of how many jobs, how many customers, sorry, how many customers have been approaching me. Uh, my what I earned four months in four months I've managed to earn in less than I think 20 days what I did in four months so you can imagine the volume of work and when I'm busy or when I have a lot more customers means there are a lot more jobs that means there are a lot more opportunities so what I'm trying to tell you first and foremost is there are plenty of new jobs coming I had told you that new jobs will be coming that part I was right but I didn't know that it would happen so fast. I don't know whether it's Expo 2020, whether people are pushing for the projects or maybe the cleansing part was there. They removed all the people from the top jobs. I don't know what is happening, but lots of people are getting new jobs, not existing jobs. For existing jobs, like I told you, people are losing the, the big positions, but new jobs are being created. So I hope you're getting a good share of the pie. Now, Let's move on to housekeeping announcements. A couple of things. First and foremost is timestamps are put down below uh, for the various topics. Please check the timestamps. Uh, links for those people who keep saying, oh, this is fake news. Law is speaking from his pocket, whatever. I put news links down below so you can check them. DBC, Al Jazeera, Gulf News, Khalid Science, whatever. Contact details. If you want to contact me, my details are put. I don't know. Why do you still keep asking? And I even put a screenshot before and after Loy Misido and my website is there. Still, you ask me, okay, if you'd like to support my channel, please do watch the ads. Because you watch the ads, I get paid 0. 0.000001 films. Yes, I'll become rich after maybe 100 million years. Anyway, if you'd like to donate to the channel, you're welcome. I've been receiving a few donations here and there for people who have got jobs. Thank you very much. And last but not the least, uh, no, second last, is if you agree, disagree. Please mention in the comments below. I never block anyone. I never censor anyone. Um, but if you do spam and you start advertising, yes, we will be blocked. And last but not the least, for the information that is shared, I keep the identity of the person confidential. So if you want, you can believe me. If you don't want, you don't have to believe. Okay. Um, so like I said, the announcements, I'm looking at the screen. My scripting is there. Um, Busy with jobs, massive increase, you know, for four months uh, load I got or whatever. Okay, I received a lot of uh, letters of thank you, recommendation on that. But, you know, I, I didn't feel anything is worth sharing. I have shared on my Instagram, I've shared on my Facebook. So if you want to see those thank you letters of people who have got jobs, you can just check it out there. Or go to LinkedIn and you'll see all the recommendations. Okay, so let's move on to the news. The first one was what was shared to me by um a expat who is before he was in uae now he has moved to india he said "Lloyd, have a look at this and this was a 
Um, this was on Facebook by this actress. Her name is Deepika Padu, Padu, uh, Padukon. Padukon. Not seen any of her movies. I don't know much about Indian movies, but it seems that this female she produced a movie called Chapak. 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 Chipak. Chapak. Chapak or whatever. Okay. So it's a 2020 Indian Hindi drama film. Uh, it seems to be about an acid attack survivor based on the life of Lakshmi. Oh my God, the name Agarwal. Yes, Lakshmi Ag Agarwal. So the the reason I'm sharing this um, uh, video uh, link, I uh, rather I'll I'll share the screenshot. Is um, she she kind of shows how in India you can just purchase acid off the counter. You can go to any shop and purchase a very strong acid. And this acid is kind of used for attacking uh, girls. So if a guy approaches a girl and the girl rejects him, what this guy does is he teaches her, seems he teaches her a lesson by dousing her with acid as an attack. So you have rejected me, you should not get any other guy. Uh, so she kind of creates the awareness how acid is easily available. It's kind of a sad reality of what happens in India. And um, it not only happens in India, I think it happens in Pakistan, Afghanistan, all these places. So this is something I, I strongly believe um, should be, the awareness should be created. And for, you know, these guys who do this, who commit this crime, they should be jailed for life. They should never be left. They should be jailed for life. So that they rot and die in prison, or um, you know, why not give you the same uh, treatment? You pour acid on the girl's face, pour acid on all over your body, and uh, you disfigure you for life. You know, uh, what do you think? How do you think people who mistreat women should be treated? So I believe that these sick men should be jailed for life. That's what I believe. So anyway, this was my response to one of the UAE expats who shared this with me. The other one was, uh, UAE expat asked me, Lloyd, what do you think of the certification for this? This was a Facebook ad. And when I clicked on it, it went to <laughs> it went to this guy, uh, Dr. Joe Vitali. I don't know if he's a doctor or what. His name is Dr. Joe Vitali, like Dr. Dre. So, And the certification is, Kupono, pono, pono. Okay. <laughs> so the certification is to learn the science of healing, Hawaiian healing of Upono Pono Pono. <laughs> so he asked me, Lloyd, do you think this certification is valid in UAE? No, focus, focus, bogus, uh, pseudoscience bullshit is not valid. Forget UAE, any part of the world. So if you want to get this Upono Pono Pono Pono, uh, certification go ahead and get it waste your money uh, and uh, you know the funny thing is when i click this ad uh, at the top it was written click funnels so whenever anyone from click funnels who uses their services they always sell you bogus bullshit okay the majority of them and they sell you courses and um, anyone who's offering you um, you know from click funnels i would never take it that's number one the second thing is Anyone who offers you a 97% off, any percent off is bogus, okay? Just imagine 97% off. That means you are overcharging people. Can you imagine an iPhone going at 97% off? Another thing which I saw in this ad is he said, this is for a limited time only within the next 24 hours is going to expire. So what I did is I checked it out for the next one week. Every week, the same thing. Within 24 hours, it's going to expire. So he has this 97% off like Pure Cardin in Dubai, which is clearance sale within 24 hours, and it goes on for years and years. So please don't go for this. This is bullshit. In UAE, remember, the only thing that works well is Wasta contacts. The second thing that works very well is having a driver's license. And the third one is if you're good at sales. After this comes the degree and all that, which obviously you need to get a visa. But uh, this bogus bullshit, uh, you know, I, I think lately there have been too many coaches in uh, UAE. Uh, the rise of coaches, you have the wellness coach, you have a confidence coach, you have happiness coach, you have motivational coach, you have uh, NLP coaches, NLP is pseudoscience, Tony Robbins bullshit, okay? Ha NLP coaches, life coaches, coactive coaches, coaches of coaches and 
business coaches and so many other coaches. So <sighs> I'm not trying to piss all of them, but uh, what I want you to understand is it is people who are selling services to make money. End of the day, even, even me, I am, whatever it is I'm doing, I'm doing it for money. So whomsoever you go to, just make sure he can deliver results and uh, just make sure it's measurable. If it's not measurable, it's bullshit. Okay. Then a couple of other um, links that were shared with me. This one was one of, these were shared to me by expats from the Middle East. So one said, Lloyd, what do you think about this? This is Jeff Bezos' phone was hacked by the Saudi crown prince. I don't know why is this so shocking because anyone's smart phone or smart device or anything that is connected to the internet can be hacked by the government, can be hacked by any of the providers, can be hacked by Facebook, can be hacked, WhatsApp can hack, WhatsApp, Facebook can hack, Facebook, uh, governments can hack your phone, any service provider can hack. They have a billion dollar setup. They can hack anyone and everyone's can be hacked. Okay. So uh, I don't know why is this surprising. In fact, for me, I know for a fact that anyone can hack my phone, anyone can hack my computer, the email, everything can be hacked, okay? They will say it cannot be hacked because obviously if they say, yes, it can be hacked, nobody will trust it, okay? So you just have to go and check Edward Snowden's um, uh, confession or his interview. He has said anything that is on a smartphone device can, you know, can hack. For example, I'll give you an example of what he said. Um, your phone, how are they able to trace where you are in which part of the world? How is it that you're able to receive receive emails or whatever? Because it is interconnected. You are just connected part of the system. So when you're part of the system, you think you are exclusive. You remember on Facebook, they used to send this disclaimer, copy paste. I hereby declare that nobody can use my photographs or updates or likeness of my image without my consent and prior permission. They put this legal disclaimer and everyone was copy pasting. And people are fucking stupid. You can have a firewall, you can have an iron wall, you can have a mega wall, you can have a physical wall, you can have antivirus, you can have everything in the world. A government which has billions of dollars worth of resources to employ, CIA, FBI, retired agents to bring in the latest softwares, you seriously think that your piddly little software, which you paid maybe $100, cannot be hacked in by a billion dollar company? think again and the biggest question that i have is what the fuck is jeff bezos putting you know intimate photographs why the fuck would you even put nude photographs or sexually explicit photographs of yours on a smart device uploaded for example if i would have sexual photographs or anything i, I wouldn't put it on a smartphone i'd put it in a hard disk you know unplug it from the internet Keep it not connected. So when you don't connect to the internet, how can anyone fucking hack into it? I don't know. I just find this really stupid. Okay. Either Jeff Bezos is playing the Saudi prince or he's really dumb or the Saudi prince is in taking for a ride. Anyway, either way, I say both of them are stupid. Uh, I don't find this news surprising at all. Okay. Next one. Um, this one you must watch. It was... Um, uh, CBS News calls Mohammed bin Zayed, the Abu Dhabi crown prince, as one of the most powerful men on earth, which is like hmm, interesting because UAE is so small and then Abu Dhabi is just a dot and uh, Mohammed bin Zayed is the leader of that dot, which is when you compare it to China, the size of China, UAE is a dot. When you compare it to India, UAE is a dot. So Abu Dhabi is a smaller dot of a dot. And they are saying, I don't know, I just feel this is one of those sponsored ads. <sighs> because it's a very small country. I mean, if you say that the, the you know, Putin is the most powerful man on earth, or you say Xi Jinping of China is the most powerful man on earth, yes, the size of the country is fucking big. Or Donald Trump, who is United States with so many nuclear weapons. UAE is like a dot. And you're saying he's one of the most powerful men on earth? I mean, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, you can give me your thoughts. The next one, which I thought was worth sharing, is Iranian uh, American academic and political analyst. I like this guy. I really do. He said, Mohammad Marandi, a uh, very logical guy. He really speaks of the ground realities of Iran. 
And for the bullshit that the American media keeps portraying that uh, Iran is an imperialist regime and all that bullshit, this guy, he calls apples, apples, oranges, oranges. He, he, he says it as it is, okay? And he, say, and he gives you facts that wherever United States has gone, it has destroyed, like uh, U.S. destroyed Iraq, U.S. destroyed Syria. U.S. destroyed, um, U.S. created the Taliban, U.S. created uh, Osama bin Laden, U.S. created all the attacks that are there, U.S. tried to invade Vietnam, U.S. tried to, um, U.S. jumped into Korea, U.S. jumped into Cuba. Uh, so U.S. attacks and destroys countries, no questions asked. Like, for example, how they killed the Iranian leader, uh, you know, Iranian, uh, that soldier, the main main guy. So if Iran had done that to U.S., U.S. would go all ballistic. It would say this is murder, but U.S. can do it to Iran. So he speaks a lot of sense. I really would, you know, recommend you. Don't have to buy or believe what I say. Look at both sides of the argument. That is what I tell you. Okay. Um, I got this one also. Um, people are going kind of paranoid about this coronavirus. Oh, no, coronavirus. Oh, my God, Lord, people are dying. What will they do? Oh, hell, corona. Oh, some of them are drinking even Corona beer. Oh, Lord, Corona. Okay, relax the fuck out. That's what I'll tell you. Relax the fucking Corona out. Here's the thing. Just Google search. You don't have to buy or believe whatever I have to say. Just Google search the number of people who are dying, the highest number of deaths recorded by any disease. You'll come to know that millions, maybe 15 million or whatever, of Half the population that died last year died due to heart-related illness, died due to diabetes, died due to blood pressure. Now, you have millions. We are talking of millions, okay? Say 15 million, 20 million, whatever. They're dying due to heart disease, diabetes, blood pressure. Nobody is talking about, oh, heart disease, oh, blood pressure, oh. No. 40 people, 4 zero. In a population of 7 billion, 7 billion, 40 people died. And people, oh my God, Lord, help me, could die. <laughs> are you fucking crazy? The chances of you dying by a road accident or by, let's say, just crossing the street is 100,000 times more then you dying of coronavirus. In fact, I would say, just do a little bit of fucking homework. Just do a little bit of research. You can get coronavirus, but that doesn't mean you're going to die. Okay? And coronavirus is like any other virus. And stop fucking sending me, oh, this daily mail send, this female eats a bat, and that's how they got coronavirus. Oh, they're eating a live rodent. I saw one of the videos where they're eating a rat. A live rat. Chinese people like to eat rats and they like to eat dogs. And people send me eating dogs, eating bats. This female was eating this bat. That's not how you get fucking coronavirus. It's cooked. It's it's a fucking animal. Whether you eat a horse or a pig or a dog or a snake or a cow or a you know burger or chicken or whatever it's meat it's fucking meat it's an animal it's meat okay and you eat meat after you eat meat cooked meat you're not going to get a fucking virus unless of course the meat is contaminated now people yes if you do eat raw like a raw rat or a raw something there are chances you can get sick okay but please stop fucking spamming me with, oh, Lord, she ate a bat. That's how she got a virus. <laughs> and <laughs> it's it's like my wife. She was telling me, my wife was actually telling me, let's not go and meet any Chinese people. I'm like, what? She said, let's, let's not go to this area. There are many Chinese people there. No, that's not how you're going to get fucking virus. Okay, relax the fuck out. It's only 40 people. They're going to control this shit. The only reason the media is taking you for a fucking ride is because it sells. News fucking sells. It's a hot topic. It's like this transgender movement. It's like Greta Thunberg. It's like um, 
uh, you know, the, uh, Donald Trump's impeachment, the hottest selling topics, they hype it up, they create fear and they, you know, they make people go berserk because people like to share. So because this coronavirus is a big thing, now they are just trying to find anything that adds fuel to the coronavirus. Oh, she ate a bat. Look at the bat. Oh my God, it's coronavirus. So it's, it's going viral. Relax the fuck out. You're going to die with heart attack, diabetes, blood pressure. That's how you're going to die. The chances of you dying by coronavirus is, is like you winning a lottery ticket. Okay. So in a population of 7 billion with nine zeros, 44 zero have died. Um, the, and the number of people last year out of the, let's say 100 million or 30 million who died, 15 million, half of that died due to heart disease. So relax the fuck out. Nobody's going to die for out of coronavirus. Fucking hell. Man, you guys, do some fucking research at least, man. What the fuck? Okay, moving on to Middle East news. The first one is great news. Great news and the good news or bad news. I don't know how you can put it. Indians in Kuwait.com reports that 40,000 expats got bye-bye from Kuwait. Uh, not much details were put, but it seems that Kuwaitis have been busy kicking out expatriates for various reasons. And Kuwait is actually in hot water because the way Kuwaitis are treating expatriates is only the second worst to Saudi. Saudi is one of the worst places to be for an expatriate because they are extremely racist. They treat them like shit. There's human rights abuse as is, is at an all-time high in Saudi. The second highest is Kuwait. And proof of this was GulfNews.com, uh, 16 January. Um, Philippines has announced a total ban on Kuwaiti uh, on workers going to Kuwait after the death of a Filipina domestic helper. Sadly, she was raped and killed, beaten to death by Kuwait, this her Kuwaiti employer. So the autopsy showed that she had suffered physical abuse uh, even before her death. And um, I, I really applaud the Philippines president. That man has balls. He has guts. He loves his people. Unlike most of the sad Asian countries, which say don't give a fuck to their own people. So he said, you are ill-treating my people. Fuck you. I'm not going to send anyone there. And he has made an overall plan. Well, it serves them right, the Kuwaitis. But then again, uh, Kuwaitis are such where, okay, they can't get uh, Filipinos. They will go to Vietnam. They'll go to uh, Sri Lanka. They'll go to India. They'll go to Pakistan. And sadly, these governments, you know, I'm an Indian passport holder. I'll tell you, they don't give a fuck to you. They don't give a fuck. Uh, if you have an American or British passport or Western passport, they will, they will, you know, they will fight for you. But if you have an Indian passport, Pakistani passport, Bangladesh, Sri Lankan, whatever, they don't give a fuck. Okay, let's move on to UAE, the country, motherland. Yes, UAE. First one, we are shitty, shitty, sorry. Yeah, shit. Shit. Sorry, it's S H E T T Y. She T. Shetty. It's called Shetty. It's not. It's like S H E is she. T T Y is T T. It's Shetty. Okay. So B R Shetty, the visionary businessman who had uh, UE exchange and who had the medical center. So his fortune just magically dropped by 1.5 billion da -da billion. It dropped because some muddy water, very dirty water claimed, that's a company's name actually, muddy water, claimed that uh, he had done some ula gula, ula gula stuff he had done. And that is why his uh, wealth that was hyped up into billions, billions dropped 50%. I don't know how the fuck does your wealth just drop 50 fucking percent. That's the problem with putting it in the stock exchange. Now, the, the thing is, Mr. B.R. Shetty, Shetty is in his 70s. He's an old man. He has achieved every fucking thing on the planet. He has done what you and I can never do. From rags to fucking riches. Let's forget how he has done. Let's not focus on that controversial bit. 
correctly, okay? But he has done it. Applause. Respect. He has done what nobody can do. And he has that nice little fancy medal that he, they say, you know, he has been awarded by the Indian government for, I don't know for what. He got it. Yusuf Ali got it. Uh, who is that other guy? Uh, Esther. Not Esther. Some Upan. Upan. Yeah. So these rich boys, they got the medal for contributing to the Indian Indians. Well, if I had that kind of fucking money, even I could get one. You know, it's money talks. That's why Obama came and shook Yusuf Ali's hand. That's why all the big shakes shake their hand. It's not because of their good heart. It's a little bit of money. You know, if you have the money, everyone likes to shake your hand, leg, your this, your that. They'll shake anything. Shake. Okay. So, <laughs> so anyway, it's money talks. That's the bottom line. Okay. So this guy, his wealth dropped 1.5 billion. The reason why it dropped is because when you put in the stock market and your wealth is dependent on what the market says, that's not a healthy way to put it. Personally speaking, I don't know why did he decide to take this one last leap of faith to become a billion million. The problem is these, especially our Indian guys, our Indian guys have this ego problem. They each one wants to, your thing is bigger, mine is even more bigger. See my, my thing big. Oh, yours is six inch, mine is seven inch. Other guys say, fuck you, both, mine is 10 inch. So they each one likes to show their sizes even bigger. That's why when any government official comes, they'll come, they'll want to stand next to him. You know, I stand closer to him. He's shaking my hand and they take a photograph to show he shook my hand, you know. So they like to do all this. Yeah, well, it's, I think after they've earned so much money, they don't know what else to do other than show off. Okay. So he put it in the UK markets or whatever and he thought, oh, I can fool the whole world. Well, the problem is you can't fool the whole world. And because of this, they found Muddy Waters, which is a you know research company which finds out if you've done any alagula funny stuff. Carson Block. I want you to search his name. Carson Block is a short seller. He's a founder of Muddy Waters Research. He was uh, called the 50 most influential thinkers by Bloomberg. So he did a little bit of research and they found out that NNC had done some alagula manipulation something as per news. Not as for me. I'm just a simple, simple reporter. So they found out and uh, Financial Times reported this. All the big papers reported. So NMC, New Medical Center, said, You think we are bad people? We will show you we are honest people. So they employed the services of a former FBI director. Nowadays, it looks like UAE and all the Arab countries, they are employing FBI, CIA, whatever intelligence, Pentagon, Hexagon, uh, uh, I don't know, circle, square, rectangle, triangle, all these people who have retired, they employ them. Good for them. They're making some shitloads of money. So they employed him to investigate muddy water claims. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, what are you trying to do? You're trying to investigate the claims of someone else claiming that they found you doing fraud like I did something bad. And somebody discovered that. So I'm employing someone to discover what he discovered about me. I mean, what the hell? Okay, anyway. But I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's not going to work. Why shitty is, sorry, be are shetty, shetty. Be are shetty. It has to be sophisticated. Be are shetty. So why his company's fortune is not going to rise, according to me. I'll tell you why. Because uh, as for Nasdaq.com, it says that uh, Dubai Emirates NBD, which had most of the shares of NMC, decided to sell. They said, no, thank you. We don't want anything got to do with you. Let's sell and make our money. The best part is New Medical Center's own vice chairman. Okay. New Medical Center's own chairman, Khalifa al Muhari, as per this article, who is the second largest. <laughs> who is one of the second largest shareholders with Saeed al Hudesi? they both themselves sold 375 million pounds worth of shares of NMC. They themselves, you know, just imagine the vice chairman of NMC, he doesn't trust his own company, he sold his own shares of 375 million pounds. So when you don't trust your own company, you don't trust your own brand, 
How the hell do you expect the market to trust? It's going to slide even more, slide, slide, slide to the point it's going to go to the dogs. And finally, they'll have to buy everything back and withdraw their names from the stock market. That's my prediction. My advice to Mr. Biashedi, listen, dude, dude, bro, bro, like how the young said, listen, bro, you've done it all, man. You've done it all. What the fuck are you kind of putting it into this stock market shit? Don't get it. You made your fucking money. Just retire. Relax. Stop trying to show anyone. Mine is bigger than yours. Big. Don't do that. You have achieved everything that you need to achieve in a lifetime. For the next 10,000 lifetimes, people cannot achieve what you have done. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Which fucking cartoon was that? Um, Freezer. No, what? Some girly cartoon, you know. Ah, frozen, frozen, not freezer. Sorry, frozen. Let it go, let it go. So let it go. Okay, next one. Um, UAE News, Aussie company, down under. Uh, Australian company, which was part of Khalaf al Habtur's contracting arm, the song. Dang. They have decided to exit UAE. Oh, UAE, bye, bye, do bye, bye. And uh, by saying bye, bye, they took a only, only 1.8 billion in Dubai. Everything is billion. Nothing is now normal. Everything is billion. And uh, I'll come to the part of trillion with Saudi. But now Dubai is billion. So even this Aussie company took a billion hit. Talia. Talia. Once again. And one more Talia for bonus. So they took a hit of 1.8 billion. What happened was, when Talaf al uh, contracting arm was doing well, al Habtur engineering, so these Gora companies thought, oh, these uh, camel country doing Arab local, doing big money. And the Arab locals were like, yes, yes, we doing billion. We want to do trillion. We want to do gazillion. You want, you want my thing? Come, come. Like, you know, uh, WWE, you know, that uh, Triple H and uh, D-Generation X. Yeah, yeah. They were doing like that. So they say, oh, we will come, we will give you Saki, Saki, come, come. So the Australian company came, uh, not came that way, came to UAE and they merged with uh, al Habtur Engineering. That was Ligunton, 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 sorry, I'm Indian, Indian, Indian pronunciation is fantastic. Okay, so Ligunton Contracting, you know, borrowed, borrowed, bought, bought a 45% stake in the Dubai-based Alaptur Engineering in 2007 for $870 million. So, Habtur was very hobby, 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 hobby. And they bought it during the boom period of the construction. So, everything, you know, being a local and obviously being close to Sheikh Mohammed. Habtur is very close to Sheikh Mohammed. So, obviously, they would get all the projects. So, Habtur managed to get because of his contacts. Like I told you, Vasta is important. UE, Vasta. So, because of that, he got the iconic Dubai Jumeirah Beach Hotel, you know, that nice wave shaped uh, hotel. They got Abu Dhabi in uh, Dubai's international airport, which is like wow. Uh, Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank headquarters. I don't remember that. Anyway, must be something good. Okay. So, they got all this, including Dubai Al Habtur City. Okay. So, they got all this and they were busy making money. However, when the thing became big, 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 the erection became even bigger. Finally, you can't keep it hard for too long. You know what I mean. Can't keep it hard for too long. It'll become small. So Dubai's erection, I mean Dubai's boom period was hardest and biggest. But after the property boom took place, the erection became You know, when your thing, when you have bath in cold water. What happens to it? Men will understand this. Ladies, close your ears. It becomes small, small. It becomes very small. So Dubai's big thing became small because of cold water, and becomes too small. It became so small, maybe the ball size was bigger than the this size. So it became so tiny that the balls were bigger than the thing. So, Linton got, poor thing, where is it? I can't, it is no more big. So, and uh, if you check 20 March 28, 2015, smh, smh.com, smh, 
the fuck is that? Okay. SMA reported that LinkedIn Holdings changed its name to CIMIC, CIMIC. Why? CIMIC is a nice name. It is Construction, Infrastructure, Mining and Concessions. Now, you might think that it was a rebranding process. No, it wasn't a rebranding process because LinkedIn, Tang Tang, whatever, they were involved in some fraudulent activities. Oh, shit. And because of which they wanted to show, oh, fuck this fraudulent activities. We are now new. Whatever virus, fungus we have inside, we are covering it with a new suit. Okay, so we are professionals. That's how we are. That's how the banking industry is. That's how the economy is. They will cheat you. They'll do all the shit, but they'll wear a suit and tie and look decent. That's why guys like me tattooed evil. But people with the suit and tie and professional, they are so nice. Have a look at all the criminals. Have a look at the people in jail. All of them are suit and tie and look perfectly nice. Okay. So they changed. However, they realized, oh, our association with the big janda, the big erections is going in loss. And they were bleeding, hemorrhaging. They forgot to put their pads. And due to which they got a 1.8 billion loss. They said, oh, we don't want camel. We don't want you. They said, Shuada, you don't want our uh, sausage? You don't want? Okay, yalla barra, go, kalas. And they said, okay, fine, fuck you. Oh, fuck you, you fuck you. You fuck you, you fuck everything you fuck. Okay, yalla barra. Okay. So, Bye bye. And that's where it stays. If you know anything better, you can tell me. Then coming to the property market, which is the most profitable, the Mac, not the Mac Burger. We are talking about dumb, dumb Mac. The Mac Burger, which is dumb, the Mac. D A M A C. Like you have the Mac Burger, you have the Mac properties. It's like a Mac Burger for properties. So the Mac's cheap. Uh, sorry, Chief, Chief uh, Hussein Saj Wani. Okay, so he's a chief uh, of Dubai. No, sorry, he's a chief of the Mac. So the Mac burger of the property market, he's the chief. So Hussein Sajwani says, let us hear what he has to say. <clears throat> uh, hello, welcome to UAE. Uh, I want to tell you that it is good time to buy property in Dubai. Dubai. Do Dubai. You please do buy the property from Dubai. And don't go McDonald and buy Big Mac. Come to the Mac. The Mac which sells you better, you know, property burgers. Okay? So thank you. And no, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, what is the script? Uh, ah, um, as per expert uh, in the market, they say now you buy from Dubai because the property is cheapest, cheapest and best, like India. India, I give discount 99% discount. Okay, um, we give you property, all the property below cost. Okay. You take, give your money, you take. No hidden charge. Uh, wallahi, we give visa, we give visa, we give everything, everything. No need to worry. Come to Dubai. Okay? Thank you. Wallah, clap you, yakhmar you, you kelp. Clap your fucking hand. Okay. Tanya, thank you, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. So this is what he said. What he's trying to say is, now it's the best time to buy from Dubai. Do you buy the properties? What he's not telling you is um, 80%, 88% or nearly 90% of his revenue is dropped. He, he forgot to mention that. He forgot to mention that uh, uh, as per national.ae, more than 50,000 units extra are going to be released this year. He forgot to mention that. In fact, um, inside sources have told me that there are more than 200,000 units which are going to be pumped into the market by Expo 2020, within Expo 2020, and during Expo 2020, and also after that, 200,000 units not been in, going to be sold. So people are just buying and selling, nobody's staying there. And you also have the scammers who are advertising and taking money and running away. So if you have illegal money or black money, 
and you don't know what the fuck to do with it, I would just say buy these properties because it's a great time. Like what he says, it is below cost. Wow. We exploited all those Indian laborers, Pakistan laborers, Bangladesh. It's below that cost also. We made them work in the sun. We exploited them. It's below that cost. Baba, buy, buy. Original, original USA product made in China, assembled in Vietnam and uh, quality control in Bangladesh. But stamp in Dubai, Guki, G U C C I, Guki original uh, designer wear. Please buy. Okay? Thank you. Give me cash. Okay. So, in case you have money, please spend. Then we have UAE for uh, in BBC World. They are again being made famous. They are saying that uh, cheetahs are being what smuggled into UAE. Are you, why are you saying smuggled? Very bad. You shouldn't say that. Exotic pets. Well, it's nothing surprising. Most of the sheikhs they are tired of having dogs and cats, so they want to have a cheetah and lion and tiger. It's like no, we don't want to have camel. We don't want to have normal pets. We want to have lion and we want to have cheetah. I don't know if one day these poor pets get hungry, then it will be Arab burger eaten by cheetah. Lion. <laughs> anyway, I know some of my friends who are engineers who work for work in these royal palace houses. They actually see these ex exotic pets. And I have also received emails of actual exotic pets in UAE or with the Saudis, all these rich guys. It's not just these people, whomsoever has fuckloads of money, they have fuckloads of exotic animals. And it's a, it's a massive trade. I don't think you can stop it. Anyway, let's move on to UAE-based news next. So next, moving to UAE, that is uh, UAE, Dubai custom, customs, not custom, not that custom, it's customs, actual customs. So it seems that uh, colleague, Times, College Times has reported Dubai Customs got rated as the worst quality satisfaction customer satisfaction. Oh, shit. Okay, bye. So, Dubai Customs <laughs> got voted as the worst. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, they were very sad about it. It is a sad day that Dubai Customs got voted the lowest. So they said, uh, okay, we will show you, we will show you that uh, we are not the worst, we are the best. Okay. So, wallahi, we will be as per the vision, vision of Dubai, we will be number one and we will try to give good quality service. Well, in a way, it's kind of nice because at least Dubai is taking the initiative to show that they want to improve, they are being honest about the fact that their service sucks. Uh, to be very honest with you, Dubai is comparatively much more better than Sarja, Ajman, Braskakrach, and um, all the other, you know, whatever. So Dubai is at least, uh, you know, comparatively better. I would give them nothing but respect to the very fact that they have the courage to admit that they suck. Okay? Anyway, that's all. Uh, personally speaking, I think Dubai is much better, much better than all the Emirates where quality is concerned because Sheikh Mohammed personally takes uh, initiative. But my heart always goes towards Dubai, but more towards Sarja. Even though Sarja is kind of more conservative, I've never had uh, kind of uh, bad memories with Sarja. But in terms of quality and a kind of international flair, Dubai is the place to be. Okay, moving on to UAE-based news. Colleague Times again says, Sheikh Mo's son, that is Sheikh, Hamdan bin Muhammad bin Rashid Al Maktoum. They always have these long ass names. They never have the short name. They, you know, they don't have something like Lloyd, Lloyd Masido, or James Maximilian, or Raj Gowda, or Ramesh Laura, or Narendra Modi. They never have short names. They always have Sheikh Hamdan bin Muhammad bin Rashid Al Maktoum. They always have a long name. Okay, so. For those of you who do not know Arabic, Sheikh Hamdan means Sheikh. Sheikh means not Sheikh, not that Sheikh, 
I mean, not shaking, but shake means like king. King Hamdan, Hamdan is his name. Bin means son. I hope I got that Arabic part right. Bin Muhammad means King Hamdan is the son of Muhammad. Then again, there's another bin. Means bin is not like a dustbin or something. It's bin means son. Okay. So Hamdan bin Muhammad means Hamdan, the son of Muhammad. And again, there's a bin that means son of Rashid. So Hamdan was the son of Muhammad. Who is the son of Rashid? Al Maktoum. Al Maktoum is a family name. Oh, I got that right. Okay. I sometimes wonder why didn't they have like Hamdan bin Muhammad bin Rashid bin something bin something. Why don't they go all the way to, you know? But anyway, they stick to bin father, bin grandfather. Okay. So anyway, this is a bit of Arabic lessons for you. So uh, sometimes maybe I think I should be Lloyd Macedo bin Machado bin Mosquito bin uh, Markadan bin Mercedes. Bin uh, Mamuti. Okay, whatever. Okay, anyway, coming to news. Okay, so the Crown Prince, Bin, 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 whatever, and Chairman of the Dubai Executive. If you're Kerala, right, you'll say Executive. You don't say Executive. Executive is only if you're trying to be Indian wannabe Westerner. So you say Executive, Executive. I'm the Chief Executive Officer. So Dubai's Crown Prince, he is the crowning glory and the chairman who sits on the chair of the Dubai Executive Council on Monday approved. What did he approve? He approved new salary scheme for government of Dubai. Talia. Talia means clap. Fantastic. There is no revenue coming in. We are only spending money. So, for you to love me, I'll increase your salary again. Yay! Yes! What a fantastic idea. I'll increase my overheads. So what did he say? As for this new scheme, government employees will receive another 10%. For what joy? God alone knows. Which God? I don't know. But fine. If I was a Marathi local, I'd be very happy. I'd be very happy. Oh, praise. Praise Allah. My, my camels and my wives all are happy. Allah bless you. Okay. So, all of them receive 10% increase. Additionally, additionally, professionals, professional employees, the normal employees will receive 10%. Professional employees will receive 9 to 16%. Okay. That means maybe they're educated. Also, apart from that, you'll also get good work-life balance for employees. That means you work a little bit. As it is, they only work only two hours. They come there. They work few hours. And they go home. So as it is, they work few hours. And on top of that, they want to ensure that they have a balance of these hours. Okay. Apart from that, they are flexible, you know, exercise, flexible hours. They will have even working from home. Oh, don't come to office, just work from home. In fact, I don't know how far it's true, but it seems that if you are a female, local, actual local, not want to be local, uh, by wearing a kandura, you don't become local. Many Bangladeshis, Indians, Pakistanis, or Muslim, they'll just wear kandura and they put a beard and they think they become local. Okay. Uh, you have to be actually Marathi. So if you're actually Marathi female and you get full tank pregnant, that means something inside and you get some babies, they will give you one year paid leave. Fantastic. Fantastic. So that also is there. Plus they will have minimum age for Emirati graduates. That's around $10,000. Uh, plus, they will have risk allowance. I don't know what the fuck is a risk allowance. Uh, they are risking their lives working for, I don't know. Okay. They get air ticket to go to some country to do boom boom. Okay. Why do you need air ticket? You are Emirati. You are same country. Where you want to go? Okay. Then they get medical insurance. They will need it because they drive like very safely. You know how they drive, no? One leg up. La, 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 la. They drive like that. Okay. And uh, end of service benefits. What they want to end, I don't know. Okay. Apart from that, they also want to ensure fair opportunities. As it is, they're getting enough opportunities. They want even more fair, fair and lovely opportunities. They want promotion. Promotion for what? I don't know. Okay. Everyone gets, <laughs> all the locals get managerial jobs. Then who will do the rest of the jobs? Yes, Asians, of course. And they want transparency. I don't know what is fucking transparency. You, you, as it is, you get un, 
you know, you get all the benefits. You don't have to work. You just come two hours to work. Uh, out of the eight hours, two hours is spent for drinking coffee and chatting. Another two hours goes into prayer because they have to pray five times a day. And by the time they sit on their computer and they put it on, another one hour goes. So they just work one hour and they go back home. So what more transparency do you need? I don't know whether the office has to have windows or what. Okay. And they want to enhance competitiveness. See, enhancement for that, there are pills and there is cream to enhance the size. Competitiveness, yes, there are some locals who are very competitive. I personally know some Arab locals who really work their ass off. Those are visionaries. Those are very rare individuals. Like, for example, Sheikh Mohammed himself. He is a very rare individual. And I, my mentors, some of my mentors who are Arab locals, uh, my friends who are Arab locals, are very hardworking. It's not at all of them. Just like it's wrong for me to say that all... Uh, all Indians are, you know, anything, smart or whatever, Hindus or whatever. I can't say all of them are the same. Everyone is different. So in the same way, not all locals are the same. However, anyway, they do get a lot of benefits, a lot of perks that they would not get anywhere else. That is why all the locals of UAE only work in UAE. I, I have yet to see where uh, UAE Emirati has succeeded in a global company outside the UAE. Let's say working in Australia, working in um, France, working in Germany, who has succeeded to work for a foreign company and rise to the top. You'll never see that. Okay. Um, and uh, they want to focus on strategic planning, HR needs, and all that bullshit. Okay. So this article basically says that Sheikh Mohammed's son has increased salaries of locals. Good for the locals, bad for the country because you're increasing your overheads. And how do they get this money? Well, the only way is indirect taxation. That's the only way as I see it. Coming to UAE, you have UAE News. You know, UAE has, uh, as per Forbes, Forbes.com, 16 January, it says, uh, Sultan bin, again, bin, Ahmed Sultan. Sultan was the son of Ahmed Sultan, al Jabers. So it's Jaber clan. He is the chief executive. Executive is executive. Uh, Indian. Indians pronounce it Exekuti. Chief Exekuti of Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is the capital of UAE. National Uil, Uil Gombadi, ad hoc. He is also the Minister of UAE Government. So he gave a great speech at Abu Dhabi Sustainable Week that the country would get more electricity. So why is this so controversial? Why? It is controversial because he said, now we are going to give you nuclear electric, nuclear electricity. So why is it controversial? Well, it is controversial because UAE will be the first country in this region to have safe, economical, peaceful nuclear power station. Now, the INIC, Emirates Nuclear Energy Corporation, which has four nuclear reactors in Baraka site in Al Dafra region of Abu Dhabi, its construction is nearly complete and it will provide 5.6 gigawatt hour of electricity. So what exactly is the problem? The problem number one, why this is controversial is because this um, you know, nuclear power plant was courtesy of Korea Hydro Nuclear Power. The problem with Korea Hydro Nuclear Power is they have been slapped with the claim that they use fake parts for their reactors, for their projects. That's number one. Second one is Paul Drof, Drofman, okay, who is the founder of Nuclear Consulting Group, says, according to him, that the nuclear site of UAE doesn't have safety features, doesn't have additional precaution, sorry, precautionary measures in case there is any problem. What he says is, in case there is a radiation, or there is an accident, or there is an attack on the plant, they don't have enough safety measures. Now, keep in mind what has happened to Saudi. Saudi explosion, 50% of their revenue in terms of oil stopped. Just imagine if this would happen to UAE. You're not talking of electricity stopping. If they have a kaboom, boom blast, you know what has happened to Japan. And Japan follows the highest standards. Just search 
all the countries which have had a nuclear disaster what the fuck has happened to them i think in us also they had one okay japan they had one russia they had one these countries fortunately these countries had the technology to survive see in russian in russia it's a vast country okay people get away from there no but uae is small the second problem with uae has is okay if you compare japan and uae japan is small uae is small but japan uses the most authentic original stuff and they have the highest standards in the world listen i have been to dubai i lived in dubai i know for a fact that dubai tries to cut fucking corners okay they are, they don't have the highest standards in the world where quality is concerned trust me they try to cut corners they contracting companies do this all the fucking while you don't have to buy a word i say so if you're playing around with the most dangerous material in the world if there is a fucking accident if there's a bomb blast if there's any fucking shit that happens we are such a small fucking place and on top of that if it has an accident there the drinking water the seabed the soil once it gets contaminated that's finished you're talking for the next 100 fucking years at least 50 years it's gone now uae says oh we have followed international standards blah 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 we are safest measures safety there's that all cock and bullshit okay and they've said oh we have had 40 inspections but here's the thing okay here's the thing the guy who is insured with this project he just wants to get it fucking done so he gets his money and he dies but the next generation is going to get fucked so and here's another thing okay the final part of the report says this korea you know this uh, this guys korea hydro nuclear power okay nuclear whatever nuclear power uae is the only customer that they have they don't have any other customer because their standards are so bad that their name is so bad in the market uae is the only contractor that they have so i don't know i would just be very afraid very very fucking in fact i would say uae why the fuck are you doing it man <laughs> just don't fucking have it it's like having the most dangerous thing in your house and if anyone even throws a stone at it it's fucking going to destroy everyone in the house why the fuck do you have it you don't need it but anyway who the fuck am i anyway let me know your thoughts okay the next one is bloomberg bloomberg says uh us admits uh, us says that its pavilion was sponsored by ue kindly sponsored in a statement they said uh, it was the generosity of the emirati government they're so generous they sponsored uh, you know i was just thinking you have been generous to the tune of 60 million us dollars to americans there are hardly any americans in ue the majority are indians why didn't you sponsor the indian pavilion why did you ask indian businessmen to sponsor their own why did you ask india to you know sponsor its own pavilion why did you ask other countries to sponsor their own why did you pay for usa why because you are fucking afraid you are afraid that you are afraid of the houthis you are afraid of the yemenis you are afraid that someone will bomb blast or do some shit in in uae during expo 2020 and if that happens your economy is destroyed your expo is destroyed so by having us presence you know for a fact nobody is going to dare attack and the reason why us didn't bother to pay because they knew you would come dancing to them so it's pretty obvious i don't know this is what i see it as what do you think do you think that us is so kind oh um, no sorry uae is so kind that they said oh us we love you yeah right anyway um coming to ue news i think uh, this is the last of the big one um you have aviation business with saif mohammed al suedi he is the main guy for the airport chief whatever he says ue has already invested 1 trillion ad the rooms 1 trillion that's a huge with nah, nine zeros 10 zeros i don't know how many zeros okay in its airport infrastructure and what he's saying is they should not stop you should keep pumping more money yeah you keep pumping more money you got to get fucking money back it doesn't make any sense the purpose of this news is to tell you how important tourism is for the ue sector and they are saying 
that they need to invest even though now tourism is dropping so you can you can see how bad the situation is okay now the next piece of news is something that almost every indian in ue and in india sent it to me and they kept asking me this what is my opinion about this i'm going to give you my opinion and the news is as per gulf news loan defaulters people who have taken loans from ue and who have run away to india they are, will now be executed in india they will be tried and tested first i'll read the article just the main points and then i'll tell you my word the long arm i don't know which arm the long arm of the law will no longer take time to catch the loan defaulters and other civil convicts of ue who have fled to india as per the report india on india india great india india on january 18th issued a gazette gazette what is gazette okay gazette notification declaring the ue as a reciprocating territory for the code of civil procedures and identifying the superior courts there and blah 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 but they were facilitating ue courts blah blah bullshit okay whatever in other words what they are trying to say is if you take if you took a loan or credit card and you ran away to india we're going to fuck your happiness we're going to catch you and we're going to put a bamboo up your ass with a steel studded dildo okay that's what they're trying to say then you have pavan kapoor who's this film actor pavan kapoor pavan kapoor indian ambassador to the ue okay never heard of him but anyway pavan kapoor must be related to anil kapoor who's another funny airy actor i used to watch his movies once upon a time when i was very young okay so he's confirmed this news to the gulf news okay he said this is a big warning uh, to those who flee in india and who take huge loans we will catch you okay fine but then then if you read the article you'll see you know always they say fine print read the fine print this is where people didn't see it and this is what i saw so what is the fine print it says finer details to be clear over time Oh. Oh, that's interesting. So finer details. What are the finer details? Finer it means in simple simple English. We don't know how the hell we'll implement this law. <laughs> we don't know. We just made plan, we just made announcement. How we'll do it we don't know. That will tell you. Here's another thing. India and UAE have been at this almost I think 20 years in the year 2000. this is 2020 20 years ago this law was being processed after 20 years they have finally made this announcement so what i'm trying to tell you is not that i'm trying to encourage you to take a loan and run away i'm totally against those people who do that that's wrong that's unethically it's it's just wrong okay but i it it's like me telling you i'm going to fly to the moon but i'll get back to you with the details how i'll do that that's exactly what it is they made a big announcement they don't know how the fuck they actually going to do this in fact let me tell you this uh this guy uh one other guy he says the new announcement is like old wine in a new bottle okay they took it they repackaged it it is to boost confidence of the financial system great but its effectiveness needs to be tested that means they just don't know how the fuck they're going to do it in fact let me let me openly challenge you with this giving you facts check the economic times of india it says uh before i tell you what it says now you're talking of a new legal case being filed and i'm sure there are millions of cases okay it's not millions let's say 100000 cases are there of people who took the money and ran away okay Are you aware, are you aware of the fact that 4.3 million cases are pending in India 4.3 million cases out of which 8 million no 800000 cases 800000 that's nearly a million are 10 years old so you already have 4.3 million pending cases they don't know how they are going to solve that they have cases pending for 10 years where people are coming to court going back coming to court going back coming to court going back from past 10 years so you already have enough and more shit that is not sorted out and now you're saying we will increase the number of cases how the fuck are you going to sort that out okay that's one second thing 
how many ministers how many underworld guys how many powerful people have committed crimes but are still not being held or held being held accountable how many i i don't have the exact number but i'm pretty sure there are lots of them okay here's another thing how many companies in uae don't pay indian people they don't pay their salaries they exploit them they cheat them they treat them like shit so why is nothing being done there why don't you have some court case out there no let these guys get fucked but these other people we will catch yeah because we are rich and they took our money we'll catch them but these poor people are getting exploited no we leave them okay then if that is not answered how about this turkish radio and television corporation trt they had this youtube uh, video where they show an increasing number of indian workers are facing uh, abuse in uae 9700 uh, complaints of indian migrant workers in the uae have been tortured and mistreated 9700 complaints from 2016 but nothing has been done so can you tell me will this also be handled or this also will be one of those cases which is pending what about 3 million uh, employed workers who are illegally employed in the middle east and exploited is there anything going to be done there you just have to go to aljazeera.com and it says more than 3 million indian workers who are hired on short notice on these loophole kind of visas uh and the reason for this increase in number of workers is because of the projects like saudi has that uh, vision uh saudi what uh, uh 2030 and expo 2020 they have all these projects that have to be completed fast so they bring people not on a long term visa where they give them perks benefits and uh, they make sure that they are taken on legal channels they get them on tourist visa or some other short term visa so they have no rights they can't claim anything so what are they going to do about these people now here's another thing okay here's another thing which they are not addressing they take people's passports which is globally an illegal act they take their passports they have no rights they do not get their salaries on time they are forced into labor they work you know the standard for which you have to work in the sun is 8 hours with one hour break these workers are being made to work 16 hours a day you don't have to believe a word i say you can just do your homework 16 hours a day they are huddled together as cattle in buses okay they are made to stay in the most horrific conditions where they stay they sleep near the sewage or they sleep like 10 people in a small room they are promised around 200 dollars 200 dollars to work in the sun for 16 hours uh 6 days a week whatever and that also they are not being paid so when you have all this going on that will not be addressed that will no action will be taken but you take the money and run away oh we will we will focus on that you know see here's here's a problem if you are talking about justice if you are talking about setting things right do it across the board keep everything open keep everything transparent talk about the racism that is there talk about the difference in salaries talk about how um you know you people are being exploited let's talk about all this you don't talk about all this but you talk about oh you take the money and run away we'll catch you like i said i'm totally against those people who do this but then we need to talk if you open the box pandora's box get ready for all the shit to come out personally speaking i just see this is another big story big news they'll talk about no action will be taken and it's going to die out. okay um uh, next one uh, since we are talking about indians being cheated uh, this guy this particular gentleman he was promised a dream job in canada and he lost 44000 dirhams uh, you know i just tell people when you know somebody shared this with me listen if something is too good to be true it's normally is the case that is why when people you know sign up for my service and they say loy can you guarantee me a job i tell them boss if you are looking for a guaranteed job there are many other people who will 
guarantee your job. You give them cash, they'll promise you a job. But after you pay them the money, don't come crying to me that, oh, I give the money, I didn't get a job, or I got cheated and all that, because there's no such thing as a guaranteed job for cash. If you're ready to pay the employer one year salary, then he'll give you a job. Why? Because you have already cancelled his losses. Because when a company employs you, they have to pay you your salary every fucking month. They are enduring, they are, you know, taking on a risk. So if you're ready to mitigate the risk, fine. But if you pay someone some peanuts, hundred dollars or something like this, many people tell me, no, I'll pay you $167, your consulting fee, if you can guarantee me a job. What the fuck are you talking about? $167 for what? Of uh, you know, three thousand dollar job per month. So you want thirty-six thousand dollars of benefit for hundred dollars or one sixty-seven dollars? Hmm. Anyway, next one coming to UE property news. Uh, Dubai to get the world's tallest hotel, January fourteenth. So College Times supported that uh, Dubai will have the world's tallest hotel in uh, twenty twenty-three. Mm. So after three years, they'll have the world's tallest hotel. Good. I, you know, my thoughts were actually going to January 13th when uh, uh, Dubai's fingerprint or something, some 550 meter tower is also going to be completed in 2023. I don't know. After that news came, there was nothing. Then you had in April uh, 2016, it seems the world's tallest tower which was going to be $1 billion, will be completed in 2020. They announced that, but then there's no news about it. Then you had uh, Butch 2020, which was also going to be completed in 2020. It was announced in 2015 that they'll complete this tower, another taller star. Nothing happened there. Then in 2003, you had Nakil Tower, which is going to be the tallest, again, tallest tower in the world which is going to be one kilometer in the sky or something like that. That also they announced. The problem is they keep announcing all these projects, but nothing is happening. So I just tell people, fine, you made the announcement, but I'll believe it when I see it. That's it. Not I'll, you know, see it when I, be, you know, I'll, I'll see it when I, I'll see it when I believe. No, no, no. You first show me, then I believe it. Don't expect me to believe it and then you'll show me. That's all bullshit. The reason why they make all these announcements is just to get people excited, just to get people ready to invest, just to show that, oh, we are doing something. But in today's day and age and social media and internet, and given the fact that Dubai is now hosting a global event, every news is going to be scrutinized and they're going to dig up the past. And the problem is, in the past, we announced so many projects None of them have materialized. People have, you know, it's like you keep crying wolf. At some point, people are going to stop believing you. Okay, next one. Um, and if you are thinking of investing, I would share these two links with you. The first one is by national.e. He says that he purchased this property, but he found out that it is its evaluation is 20% hyped up. So now he has to sell it less than what he purchased it for. And another one, this one is National Roddy. He says, a uh, guy from UK, he says, I purchased this property. It was supposed to be completed in 2018. It didn't happen. They said 2019. It didn't happen. 2020 this year, they said it's not going to happen. 2021 is a new date. And he doesn't know if it's going to happen. So can I sell it off? Because it's it doesn't seem to be happening. This is the problem in UAE. You buy stuff. And then in the end, uh, they promise you we'll deliver by this date. You can't take them to court because it's one person against a big government entity. And if you take them to court, it goes on and on. And I'll speak to you one more news about a guy who took a company to court. What happened? Next one. Two guys got arrested for, in UAE for a... This I found funny. Ajman police arrested two guys for duping people because they claimed they could double the money. Now, how did they double the money? They showed a black paper. They sprayed some ink. And magic, it became a hundred dollar bill, or it became hundred dirham, hundred dollar bill. So they said, "We'll give you all this black paper. You just a spray ink, and it becomes money." So they took fifteen thousand dirham, so roughly four thousand US dollars. They took in exchange for this bag full of black paper. 
you have to be a really a special kind of idiot to fall for this anyway they caught these guys uh, it just goes to show you what idiots are there on this planet and talking about idiots you have three sri lankan friends our brothers from sri lanka they got fined half a million wow they i hope they are really fucking rich because they got fined half a million dirhams each for insulting islam online hmm like year of tolerance like they said dubai uae is year of tolerance see we are so tolerant we didn't charge them 10 million we didn't kill them we just find them half a million that's all only uh, so you insult we'll give you discount so insult islam you just pay half a million that's all nothing more we will not kill you nothing so these sri lankan dudes of a five star resort security guards they insulted islam on instagram and facebook and now they'll get bamboozled for it ha <sighs> i'm so glad that uae is following tolerance so nice talk about tolerating stuff in linkedin to have professional begging taking place so this guy was actually begging for a job in linkedin <laughs> please help me help me get a job i lost my job <laughs> hey and people are like i'll help you don't worry email me your cv i'll get back to you i'll forward it to everyone i know don't worry and some other people i'll pray for you sending prayers your way good so now if you want to beg linkedin has also become a great place for begging and uh, i was talking to you about this expat who got cheated of nearly 100000 dirhams he shared with me this large email i don't want to read the whole thing but to give you a nutshell of what had happened is he didn't get paid for 6 months he took this employee to court when he took the employee to court he shared his experience in the court he said there were lots of blue collar laborers all were waiting with a piece of paper in their hands they just standing there they go to counters they don't know what to do even the locals don't give a damn the locals themselves don't know what to do they'll keep telling go to the typing center so he said he just saw the pitiful conditions he went two years two years back and forth after two years back and forth paying the lawyers paying the court paying all the fees good news he won the case so now you'll be like see lawyer justice is there well let me tell you he won the case and guess what he got given another piece of paper and with the other piece of paper now he had to again go back and forth back and forth to claim the money which never happened finally he said he lost all his money he couldn't do anything health got ruined money got spent on hospitals everything else and now he is back in india he never got paid the money he wasted all the years going back and forth and now he says the employer the guy who cheated him is still roaming freely in uae and is making money like i told you you know you're a second class citizen in this country don't take anyone to court because they'll portray that they are fair they'll portray that they are perfect laws but they only claim they don't have the capacity to deliver okay okay let's speak about uh, social media in the middle east uh, this queerie couple was posted uh, was arrested for posting a model video i watched the video and the husband is just hugging the wife on the waist and the wife says oh he's touching me on the waist or something like that and because of which uh, they got arrested as per them they are saying that we faked this video so that we could get people who speak bad about us we could complain to the police that's why we faked this video wow that's logical i uh, hope uh, it was worth faking the video then i got a question from one of the readers who asked me why why is it that khalid al amri who is a very famous blogger in uae why doesn't he say the real truth well because he is a citizen of the country he is a um, you know he is a so you know public personality if he speaks the truth or anything negative of the uae he can go go to jail and i'll tell you this a lot of uae locals are very afraid of posting anything online because if you do you can not only get jailed even if you are a citizen you will not only get jailed you will get fined millions and you just have to google search of a emirati activist he has been in jail for i think uh, i think many years now 5 years 10 years or whatever detained in dubai wrote a story about him and uh, he is not allowed to meet his wife he is not allowed to meet his family his health is deteriorating and uh, you know i'm sure nobody wants that okay anyway uh, speaking of uh, the same topic 
um, the TRA, that is Transport Road Authority, warns residents on upload. So if you put any content that anyone can complain, you can be jailed, you can be fined, you can be deported. In fact, one of them in Kalish Times reported that uh, a 31-year-old teacher from Dubai was fined 10,000 dirhams. He'll be jailed and then he'll be deported. Why? Because he posted one, uh, one person's photograph uh, on Instagram with a dog face on it and saying that new breed of dogs for sale. So the court confiscated his smartphone, took down the post, shut down his account. He'll be jailed, he'll be fined, and he'll be deported. So I hope this answers your question. And last but not the least, the most important bit that I want to give you, this part of the information that I'm giving you is not mentioned in the news, is given by expatriates. So, you know, uh, whether you accept it or reject it, it's up to you. I would just say, do your research and let me know if this information is true or false. The first one that I want to tell you is Salik is going to be introduced in a couple of more Emirates of UAE. And they're going to increase the number of toll gates. They're also going to increase the Salik amounts. That's the first news that I got from a reliable source. Another second news is more fines will be given to people. You'll be fined by the police or you'll be fined for any small reason. And uh, you'll not know the fine. So make sure that you keep checking the fine. And yes, if you get fined, you have to pay for it. There's no way the fine will be cancelled. Number three is... Um, there are certain companies who are going to delay in terms of salaries. Uh, the problem is I cannot name the company without evidence. A couple of names are given and the salaries are going to be delayed there. And the reason for this is because they have not been paid for the projects that they've completed. Point number four is law, some people who did go for holidays, they have been asked not to come back, especially from the hotel industry, from the travel industry, and from the construction industry. Many of them have gone for holidays and they were sent an email saying, Please don't come back because right now projects are hold. If you do come back, your visa will be cancelled. So uh, some of them have sent me the email with regards to this. Point number five is there will be discrepancies in terms of your contract. So the contract that you sign and you start working for, they might say you'll work for eight hours or whatever, but that can be changed. I've known some people whose contracts have been changed and um, even their salaries, which are agreed upon, have been changed. That is after confirming. Imagine the person moved to UAE, they changed their residence, they bought their families, and then they were given the shock. This is your new contract. Either you accept it or we can cancel it and you can go back home, take your family back home. And, you know, people don't have a choice. Then. Especially if you are on probationary period. Some of my friends who I know, on the probationary period, they lost their job. So no compensation will be, will be given, no explanation. Uh, parking charges are going to be increased and parking fines are going to be given more quicker. Uh, visit visas are going to be made easy. Starting a business process will be made much more easier so that at least revenue comes in. Bank loans, it seems, are going to be made easier so people can borrow and purchase. Uh, more sales are going to take place. So in case you are looking to spend money, well, this is your opportunity. I would say be careful. Taxi meters, uh, they're going to go faster. So you, the distance that you normally cover, you'd be paying much more. Uh, point number 11 is uh, um, it seems that the new policies that are going to be put into place is going to ensure that whatever money you earn in Dubai, you spend or in UAE, you spend in UAE. They don't want you to remit this uh, savings back home because if you do that, they don't earn any money. Uh, Point number 12, now I don't know how far this is uh, right or wrong, but it seems at least 50,000 people have been deported from UAE. I got one of them who sent me that he was wrongly jailed and uh, he was just deported without any savings, without anything. So he told me this because he was in jail and uh, he faced abuse. I don't know how far what he said is true, but he said he faced sexual, um, sexual and spiritual abuse, physical abuse in jail. And last but not the least, uh, it seems that people who held old positions, they are being made redundant and people below them are being offered the position or new positions are being advertised for the same position, but at a much more lower salary um, and also with lower benefits. And there are many people who want to grab those opportunities. That is why maybe I've been busy. So guys, these were some of the updates that I thought I'd share with you. Let me know which one you agree, which one you disagree. And if you have to get in touch with me, my details are put down below. Uh, like I said, whatever information I share is by people who are based in me. 
So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you very much. This is me signing off. If you'd like to leave your feedback, comments, emails, whatever, my details are put down below. This is me signing off. Take care.